hello, good morning, good afternoon, or whatever time it is for you, wherever you are at. I'm on holy ground right now at my church recording this. It is a signs, miracles, and wonders event, and I'm here early. And I decided to take the time to come back and get back right in alignment with the Lord and what he has given me to do in 2024, which is 365 days of Bible study. And I'm going to get caught up. I am currently maybe 10 days behind, so I have a lot of work to do. But the word says the righteous man falls seven times and gets back up. So grace is available his grace is sufficient and i am leaning on it and i thank you to my friend my fellow servant leader who called me out <laughs> in a loving and kind non-aggressive way but I, I i knew it was time to get back on it and i just thank god for grace i thank god for accountability and fellowship and today we are going to talk about position purpose and presence position purpose and presence so we are jumping right back in to the mind of christ and this was not on my list but i wanted to talk about it so what brought it to my attention was i was watching a video and it was talking about the church as a whole the christian community and what we are missing out on and it was so impactful because i got home from service which didn't get home until about 12 because that's how we get down and I could not go to sleep it is 3 40 in the morning and for the life of me I cannot sleep so I'm like okay let me watch something and I tried to watch a movie which what good is that gonna do me and I couldn't find anything of interesting or value. I was like, I bind all of this, all these trials and tribulations. I don't want to watch no trials and tribulations. I'm walking out of that and I got to protect my, my ear and my eye gates. I, I, I'm stepping into a place of abundance in God's promise. And I can't be watching people sh- struggling online and digesting and consuming that and and not being in a place of purpose right so it's okay to be in a space with people who are struggling and who are going through it but being in position to help not just consuming that pain that trial and that tribulation and that's relevant to what we're talking about because we're talking about position purpose and presence okay so I click on it and it's basically it said these two things are missing in the church and they talked about us being the salt and the light in that service we had a guest speaker and he was talking about us being the light of the church and our new volunteer program was announced which is called salt and I was just like this is nothing but the Lord speaking so I had to put it together and I'm definitely going to do a part two on this I just wanted to get something together so he was talking about in the video how salt is so impactful and we are the salt of the earth we the body of the Christ are the salt of the earth but salt has no value unless it is out of the salt storage container unless it is out of the packaging and when it's the salt of the earth how it has an impact on the earth is when it is in contact with the dirt and they were using that as a parallel and to highlight us as the body of christ if we are continuously focused on the church members of the church being in the church being at conferences like this the irony of it okay but i'm here to fuel my cup so i can take it out into the world so i can be that salt so i can be in contact with the dirt i am not afraid to be around sinners i'm not afraid to be around strippers prostitutes drug dealers fornicators whatever it may be that does not scare me i i do not feel convicted condemned anything by being in those rooms or being in those spaces why because i know i am the light of the word of the world i am standing on god's word so i'm positioned and i am placed in god's word knowing what he has called me to do what he has called me to be in those spaces i'm not there 
to be friends, socialize. I'm there to be the literal presence of God in those dark spaces. And it just reminded me of how Jesus never strayed away. So I wanted to talk about Matthew 9, 10 through 13. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax excuse me, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have come not to call the righteous, but the sinners. Our Lord and Savior literally came for the sinners. He didn't come for those who are holier than thou, already, you know, walking in the word, following the word, you know, in the presence and light of God at all times. No, he came because we are incapable of fulfilling the word. He is the fulfillment of the world because the word because he knew we were incapable. The word is a reminder to show us that we need a savior. And I just wanted to highlight how as he's talking about the people that he's around, he's not justifying it saying, these are my friends, these are my people. No, he's saying, these are the sick who I have come to heal. So he is there in the position of being the doctor figure for the people who are sick. So if we're going to be it, so the point is to not stray away from being in these spaces, being in these rooms, being around these people. We are the atmosphere. We control the atmosphere. So even if we're in a dark space or an atmosphere, if we are standing on the word of God, it says we are the light of the world. What does light do? It drives out darkness. Where there is light, darkness cannot exist. So if we are just seeking to be in rooms full of light, how is the darkness going to be driven out? As I sit here in this car. But again, I'm making the point he was acknowledging who they are because when we see in the other scriptures that are talking about not to associate or be around people who are sinners people who are fornicators it's saying not to be friends with them so with that being said i wanted to highlight first corinthians 5 11. but now i am writing to you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of brother if he is guilty of sexual immorality or greed or is an idolater, whoa, these words are going to take me out. These are regular English or revealer. Is that drunkard or swindler? Not even to eat with such a one. Okay. But we have to think about this in the context and understand who is being addressed. These are the letters to the church. The church is currently being addressed. And it's saying not to associate with them. What is to associate? So when we talk about associates, right? That's usually in business. So the church cannot go around highlighting these people. The church as a body, we are not associating with them as, oh yes, I understand this person is a sinner. I'm a, a you know, this is our church. It's like our church highlighting those people. But us as vessels of God, as Jesus sat and ate with them, we understand we are not associating with them. We are healing them. We are helping them. We are bringing them out. We are delivering them. So what is your intentions on being around those people? So it's that purpose part. So your position, when you are with those people, when you are in those situations, you are positioned as the light with the intention of helping them, with the intention of being that figure 
of God, that vessel, that mouthpiece of God in that situation in front of his people who need his help, who need his light there to administer it because you are carrying his presence. But if you are in those situations and you are not standing on the word of God, knowing that he is in within you and dwells within you and his presence is there to to heal and show mercy. That is what the word says in Matthew 9, where we started off with. He says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. So where are you showing mercy? So it's being in those spaces, being around those people to show mercy, being the salt, being in contact with the dirt. We see the reward that comes with getting dirty, not being afraid. We think about the man who was healed of leprosy by going into the Jordan, going into those dirty waters. And Jesus, Jesus, Our Lord and Savior told him to go out into those waters and be cleansed and be and be healed. So he is showing us that in those those dirty, those grimy places, it is possible for cleansing to take place. So do we have that mindset? Is that our perspective and our purpose in those situations? And are we positioning ourselves to be that light, to be the atmosphere changer, to be in control of that situation? But it's all about your intent and your heart posture and your focus. What are you focused on? But if you are focused on condemning and judging people, when it comes to 1 Corinthians 5, the reason why I brought that up is because he's talking to the church and he's saying, If this person is claiming to be a brother, he's not talking about the people in the world, okay? And that's what I'm talking about now because a lot of Christians try to isolate and separate themselves from the people in the world. But how are they going to have their divine appointment with God? Your judgment, your condemnation, your desire to be clean, holier than thou, purified in that way by being away and outside of spaces with the sinners is possibly threatening someone to take away someone's divine appointment. You could be their divine appointment, but your mind is not focused on Christ. Your mind is not focused on seeing them through the perspective of this is an assignment from the Lord. And I'm going to be the healer. I'm going to stand in the gap. I'm going to stand on the word of the God, word of God. The word of God literally tells us, let me find it. John 20 23 whoever sin you forgive they are forgiven whoever sin you retain they have been retained so think about it if we are going around looking at people as sinners that is us retaining their sin instead of looking at them as sick people the church is literally a hospital so when we look at them as those who need healing instead of those who are sinners And have eyes of forgiveness for them for their sins and stand on the word of God and the authority he gave us to forgive their sins, to forgive them. Which one's more impactful? Which one is more powerful? And which one has you centered in place and operating in purpose? So that is the spiel today on position, purpose, and presence and I do want to dive more and pull more out on the presence aspect of that but that was you know just a kickstart get me back into it because it has been a while since I've been on here but if you have made it to the end of this God bless you I thank you go out be the salt be in contact who can you be in contact with who needs the cleansing of the Lord we are here to help cleanse the world you are the salt of the earth. It's not just some cute thing uh, of Jesus being like, yes, I love you. You're doing great. You're you're above all these things. He's like, no, you are the salt of the earth. Go out there. Get in contact with the dirt. Get dirty and bring the lost back to me. Okay, so we are bringing the lost sheep back to, to our shepherd, back to our savior and working and operating in the power and authority that he has given us. I thank y'all for being here. I thank Thank y'all for the grace. Please pray for me to just be obedient and disciplined in doing this. I thank the Lord for the grace he has given me to be back today um, and for another day. And I pray that this touches you in some way. Father God, I thank you for opening our eyes to opportunities to be, truly be and embody the salt of the earth that you have called us to be, to truly be the light of the world and to cast out the darkness through the light that radiates through us, Father God, because you have given it to us, Father God. Thank you 
for highlighting us within the community and making us beacons of your of your character, your mind, and, and your actions of the words that you have given us to meditate on today, Father God. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for our time on this earth, on this plane. We thank you for our purpose, Father God. Thank you for accelerating each and every person who is hearing my voice in their purpose, Father God. May they be impactful today and all days as they go about. In Jesus' almighty name, we pray and we thank you. Amen.